Hey, I have two buttons. I have two sides. I can check it from either one. I forgot all about that or didn't even think about it. Didn't know what I was doing, but that's cool. Hey, what's going on folks? Bienvenue, my name is Wade and this is Sabine River Valley. So I just got me a new tool that I've wanted for a very long time. But before we can use it, I'm gonna have to disconnect the grapple hoses from the third function couplers. So let's get to it. So that was pretty easy. I didn't even have to turn the tractor on. All I had to do was turn the key to where the electronics came on so I could actuate the third function. So um, I think that's what it's called. I I'm not sure actually, but I just needed to be able to hit the, th the third function buttons to open the valve, right? Um, I, I think it's an actuator that does that. I I'm not 100% sure if that's the actual techn technical term for that. But I just needed to hit the button so that would open and I needed the electronics to be on. But I didn't want the tractor on. I didn't want the pump running to actually push fluid through because I'm trying to release the pressure that might have already been on there. So what I did was I basically just cleared the line so that there's no pressure when I connect something back up to it. I could have Without doing that, I, I could have released the couplers and they would have released, but it might have been a pain when I went back to connect them if there was pressure built up behind them. So why did I do that? Well, the tool that I got is something, again, I'm, I've been super, I'm super excited about. I've wanted one of these for a really long time. And it's actually a inline flow meter from HydroCheck. So right here, if you can see this, it will plug into my third function and really any kind of hydraulic line I have, as long as I have the right couplers for it, but it'll plug in and then it will let me know how many gallons per minute I'm getting from that, that valve. So basically what I'm going to be able to do is verify that I am getting what I'm supposed to be getting from my hydraulic pump on the implement side. Now, when I say that, verify that I'm getting what I'm supposed to be getting, you know, there are other things that come into play here. And one of them is the distance from the pump to, you know, from the system to the third function. So that's gonna, there's gonna be, there's nothing really I can do about that. But there are other things in there that can limit your gallon per minute. All of your connections, all of your fittings, your um, valve block might not be big enough to get the full gallons per minute. It, there, there are all kinds of things. Your, your hoses could be too small. So what does that mean if they're too small and you're not getting the gallons per minute that you think you're getting? Well, if you want to use an implement that needs that full flow at the front, of the tractor, then you're gonna wanna make sure that everything from the, from the pump all the way up to the couplers 
supports that gallon per minute. So just a little story is when I first got my third function put on my tractor, I didn't realize it at the time. I didn't even think about it, didn't pay attention to it or anything. But a few months later, I find that they used quarter inch hoses from the block all the way to my couplers. And according to the, according to the book, according to the, the flow calculator, at 3,000 PSI, you're limited to around two gallons per minute with quarter inch. And I don't know if that's true or not. That's just from the calculator that I've used online, that's what I've been going by. So I have, for me, right off the bat, I have a skid steer quick attach auger. And it's, it's made for a tractor. It's not made for a skid steer. It's actually made for a tractor but it needs the pump that I have on it, the, well, the auger motor, not the pump, the auger motor that I have for it needs a minimum of seven gallons per minute. And I was just fine with that because I'm supposed to be getting somewhere around 10 gallons per minute. So I didn't think anything of it until I started, I changed out my couplers on the front to, um, flat face couplers and while I was doing that that was the first time I noticed that I had quarter inch hoses so I went and talked to my dealer about it and he was actually he's the one that I actually bought the auger from and I've actually got a video somewhere on uh, that I've shown a few times for his auger that he sells and he's using it on a it's it's one of the Branson models, like a, I don't know, 4215 or 42, or uh, what it, in the 20s, is there a 4220? Uh, 4820, uh, 3620, I, I don't remember. It's somewhere, somewhere around there. He's, he's using it on that. And he's got quarter inch hoses on it and it's, it's doing its job. Now he's using it in what we call black gumbo. So it's not, it's not the easiest stuff, but it's also not rock, right? And that might where that might be where you need the full flow, right? If you're if you're using it in something that's really tough, like a lot of rock or something like that, then you might need that full flow. But where I'm right now, we're on sandy loam out here. I, I might not need it. I, a quarter that quarter inch hose might have done just fine. But I wanted to make sure that I had just the full flow for that in case I get somewhere where I do need all of it. So we changed, he, he actually replaced everything for me and I've got um, three eights, right? Three eights now everywhere, which is supposed to do like eight to nine by the calculator that I found online at 3000 PSI. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. But that's the whole point of having this inline flow meter is We'll be able to check this now. We'll be able to see pretty much what I'm getting there. It's got a very, um, very small um, rate of error, just very small. I think like three or four percent, something like that. It was it was really small, and it, that that won't affect me at all. If, if I'm within, if it, if I'm within what I think I'm supposed to be within, and that's the error, I am totally fine with that. I won't have an issue at all. So HydroCheck has actually provided us with a coupon code to save a little bit of money um, when you're purchasing something from their website. It's uh, SRV10. So if you want to get your own meter, you know, just uh, uh, go put it in your basket, go to checkout and add that coupon code and you'll save you 10% off of that. And so, you know, any little, any little bit helps. So we really appreciate that from HydroCheck. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up. I like, like I said, I've got flat face couplers on my tractor here, and I've also installed flat face couplers on the hoses for the meter. So we're going to get this hooked up real quick. And we're going to find out first if I have it going in the right direction, because this is a one way meter. This meter checks in one way. Now it's got a relief valve in it. So if I run it the opposite way, as long as I'm not just hammering on it, if I just see that it's not, it's not uh, measuring, 
then all I have to do is stop, take it off, and I, this has O-ring boss fittings on it. So it's, a, it's just an O-ring fitting. I can actually take this off pretty easy, put it back on. I don't have to worry about using any type of pipe dope or tape or anything like that. So that'll be easy just to switch around. So the first thing we got to do is find out if I've got it in the right, if I've got these on the right side. So let's go ahead and get it connected. All right. So the way I have mine set up is the larger side, the female side, is on the bottom on the tractor side. So I need to do that one first. So sometimes I have issues, even with these, getting the right amount of, there it is, force there. But that wasn't bad. All right. Number two. There we go. All right. So here's the deal. I don't know if I can see this or not. What's cool is I can turn this, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see it up there in the cab, if it's moving or not. But I'm gonna try, but what I will do is I will let you watch for me and you can tell me if it moved or not. All right, I got you repositioned. Hopefully you can see this. Let's check it out. And hopefully goo oil something like that doesn't come spewing out of there because i don't know how good i have that tightened down but i'm just gonna go with it because that's what gleeman would do I'm idling at about 900 RPMs. So I'm gonna take it up to 1500 and we'll see what she does there. 1500 is usually the minimum that I like to have my tractor on at. Usually I turn my tractor on, I let it warm up. And then once it warms up, then I'll, I'll bring it up to at least 1500 and I won't bring it down below that again until I'm ready to turn the tractor off. So 1500 is usually the minimum operating rpm for me so let's check that out and see how that does all right 1500 here we go how'd you do she looked like she did all right. All right, let's bring her back down. and So let's just go up to about 1800, see what she does there. All right, that's 1800, here we go. Looking good. Now, all right, that's PTO throttle. Here we go. All 
Now that was pretty good. That got up there. All right, before I get out, I'm going to turn the key back on just for the electronics. And I'm going to run the actuator so I can clear that line. Man, I should have looked to see if it did anything while I did this. That would have been cool. Oh, wait. I got a camera on it. I will be able to see. Hey, I have two buttons. I have two sides. I can check it from either one. I forgot all about that or didn't even think about it. Didn't know what I was doing, but that's cool. All right. So we did PTO RPM, which was 2200. Then we did, I know we did at 1500 and 1800. So we'll be able to see at each one of those. I called them out every time though. So we'll be able to see at each one of those how she did. And if I would get enough flow up here to be able to use something cool like an auger when it's really rocky or even that post hole driver that Evan likes to show off on his channel. Cause that's one of my favorite favorite implements that i've seen on the the third function now my very favorite absolute very favorite is a lane shark man if i could have an implement for my tractor it'd be a lane shark you think i get enough views for them to watch this i think they'd send me one probably not but anyway, all right, so I'm going to go back and look at the footage. Now, listen, sun's going down. It's going to take me a minute. So it's probably going to be tomorrow when I look at this or when I it's probably going to be tomorrow when I get back to you. And you'll know because I'll be wearing a shirt, new shirt. And hopefully I'm wearing a new shirt. Hopefully I've showered and shaved and everything else. Right. So but I'll get back to you when we go through the results. All right. All right, so it's the next day. I've looked through the footage and man, I am super excited. I cannot tell you how happy I am about that. I am so glad that I've put a meter on here and actually know what I'm getting out of this thing. And the results themselves just kind of blew me away. 11.5, I kind of think it jumped up close to 12 there for a second, but 11.5 on that. And even with a error rate of plus minus 2%, I, I am, man, that's just, that's still amazing. It, it's, it's actually much higher than what the specs show on this tractor on the TYM website. So I am super excited about this. So, I mean, look, Lane Shark, if you're watching, you know, I know y'all probably need some, some, you know, good popular YouTubers to use your equipment on their channel. And look, have your people, call my people, we'll set something up, all right? But anyway, I'd also like to give a shout out to Ken over at Bolt on Hooks. I didn't know what meter to get. I, I really wasn't sure about that. And I talked to him about it and he came back and gave me a couple options and, and I picked one of those. And that's really the only reason I have this now is because he was able to help me through that. You know, Bolt on Hooks has a bunch of stuff um, for tractors, some really cool uh, bucket attachments, right? With hooks and things, uh, D-rings, all that to kind of help your, you know, your bucket be more versatile free to use but also he does some hydraulic stuff i'm actually i've bought some uh flow restrictors from him he's making some really high quality flow restrictors um he's even got british thread on those so that's uh really a plus that's very rare that's very hard to find so yeah just wanted to to thank ken for his help with all of this i know what y'all are thinking look i've got two of these shirts all right Actually, I think I have three of them. So it's a new shirt. I'm clean, I think. So anyway, but look, I really do appreciate y'all watching. And Lord willing, I will see y'all on the next one.